Hey folks, here's a quick video here to show you my homemade radial arm saw. Uh, this is something that I've, uh, you know, redesigned over the years, and this is a, a look at it uh, in its best state, I think. Uh, you know, I did have a set of metal rollers on this once upon a time, and this saw was all metal, but uh, I always found that the metal rollers always, uh, you know, there was always sawdust in them, and it always seemed to do a rough cut because any little bit of sawdust in the in the steel rollers would translate into a little bump on my saw which could create a little bit of a jigger which would cause it not to do a real nice cut uh, and plus I had a hard time lining it up with uh, only using a few rollers so uh, what I've got here I'll just go over this uh, you know how I built this um, this is all malamine here is what it is just three quarter inch white malamine uh, it's a good grade of malamine uh, I don't know what it would be, 120 great grain I think it's called. Um, and you can see I've got a metal frame here and what it is just a piece of 4x4 four four, and uh, I've got it welded at a 90 and running down through to the floor and uh, to a metal frame here that I've got made. Um, and then uh, just a malamine uh, top on here and uh, I use it as a bench too uh, as well. So we'll go up here and I'll, I'll uh, go over here why I use the melamine. Uh, so what I need it folks as you can imagine trying to do a nice smooth cut then you need a smooth set of slides no matter what you're using and I found with bearings with little round I tried using little round bearings I always found that it was kind of a gritty kind of you know and uh, use little round steel rollers it was kind of a gritty kind of roll it was you know it wasn't smooth and uh, so, you know, if you've seen my video that uh, where I made the homemade pocket hole machine, um, you know, really starting to realize how good malamine slides on each other. Uh, you know, that machine has a, a set of a malamine slide that the drills hook to that just slides back and forth. And, uh, it, you know, it slides with very little effort. Uh, here's a little test you can do is take a couple of pieces of malamine and just see how good they slide on each other. Um, and especially if you use a little bit of spray silicone, you know, spray both sides and wipe it down like you're supposed to and, uh, and then try sliding it on each other. I'm sure, folks, I could put a bucket of paint on this and just pull this back and forth with just a little bit of effort. This slides so good. So, you know, once I had a, uh, had a nice straight beam coming out off of here that was nice and rigid, um, then all I had to do was hook onto this, you know, that I had a slide mechanism hooked onto this. And uh, as you can see, that's what I've got made here. Um, this is just a piece of malamine coming across the top, and this beam's about a foot wide. I wanted something fairly wide because, you know, the bigger area that I cover, the, the less resistance I would have with this, uh, with this slide mechanism. So just a simple piece of malamine coming across, and I pocket hold it uh, to another piece that ran down and it was just down low enough that I could hook my saw on. Uh, you know, this is a, a metal cutoff saw, so it has a metal shroud, and I was just able to uh, to drill in uh, through this shroud and put a few screws to hold this to this piece of malamine. And I went really low like this for a reason, folks, is I never cut off anything more than three quarters of an inch thick. That's the, the thickest material I'll use, and uh, you know, this one has the capability of cutting off about an inch and a half, I believe, um, is what I left for the maximum thickness, but um, so, but three quarters is what I mostly cut with this. Uh, so that, so I had that set so that you know this was coming down low. I wanted something that was going to make this safe too. Something that you know I couldn't get my fingers in around the blade. You know the blade is actually set back uh, quite a little bit from. I'll try to get a picture here for you. The the blade is actually set back in there quite a little bit, so it would be hard for me to get my fingers in around there. Uh, when I'm cutting on this. I wanted to make something pretty safe too. Um, so uh, you can see that I've got this bracket made here and this was just to make it a little bit more rigid uh, and just made it a malamine too. And I had a you know a bracket here on the end to hold up on the you know to hold the motor uh, just to make it a little bit more rigid. I didn't you, you know you can't have no movement here when when uh, when you're doing this or you won't end up with a nice straight cut. Um, so, you know, I did think about using drawer slides for slides, and I thought about using different things, but, you know, after using the melamine, uh, I'm real happy with the way this is working. Um, I found that, you know, because the saw is cutting like a radial arm saw, with the teeth pointing forward like they are, it'll have a tendency to try to, it would have a tendency to try to lift a little bit. And, uh, 
it pulls through really nice but the the lift you know i i really thought it was going to happen right here but what it actually translates into folks and i think the reason why is is this saw is pretty heavy hanging on here so all the weight seems to transfer right to here but then it was the lift was trying to happen back here so i did try to you know put some weight on this and uh you know put a little uh slide on this but i found the best way was is uh is I added this other piece of, of melamine here and just miter or, or angled it here at 22 and a half degrees and I put this simple set of rollers in here to uh, to hold it tight uh, so as you can see as long as I hold it tight to this you know this should run down that you know it'll run down that nice and straight and uh, by hooking the saw to it you know it's a pretty straight uh, simple uh, radial arm saw so you know to, to hold it tight I needed something that was going to also hold it tight over this way but I also needed to hold it from going up in the air because it had a tendency to want to lift on this end so these this simple set of wheels on the end kind of solves both problems because by angling them like I have uh, when it tries to raise it's actually going to get tighter so it won't allow it to raise and plus if I have them you know they're kind of nice rubber wheels so I can have them nice and tight and uh, still have a little bit of play in this or a little bit of give in this for it to allow it to uh, you know run along smoothly so it's it's actually pretty amazing how easy this thing does roll back and forth um, and again it's all based on how smooth and how good malamine slides on each other um, so it was quite a job to get the saw lined up um, you know you have to know you know it, it's one of them things of having to know each feature you know if you're trying to do a straight cut you know by this being my straight edge that I'm trying to follow right here then I had to have my saw running straight to this or even with it I couldn't have my saw running down this track you know crooked like that because it wouldn't do a nice cut I had to first of all is get my saw running parallel with this beam and uh, because the saw is hanging off of the the beam it's going to follow the same line and I just had to get my my saw off lining up with that line and you know by measuring from you know the edge of this uh, front and back then I was able to line up the saw and then I had to, to true up my saw so it was running square to the to my surface here that where my material is going to be laying and I did that just by attaching this this bracket here and I left it a little bit shy as you can see just so I could draw it up in the air because it did have a tendency it was wanting to sag down um, so now we'll go over uh, I'll show you my dust collection uh, so not only can this thing cut off 30 inches folks but it's doing it uh, totally dust free uh, and the way I've done this is I've uh, my dust collection system is actually really really small but uh, I'm, I'm trying to collect my dust from a real small area so you can see that you know this is just a a little uh, groove that's three quarters of an inch high and it's about three inches wide here and I've where my saw cut comes in uh, you can see that I've plowed this quite a bit wider well this is the area where you know right at the tip of this saw is where the sawdust is all produced uh, I found when I was cutting the sawdust was just spitting back towards the wall and it was staying down you know about this height too just you know and just spraying it back towards the wall so I knew that I had to have my dust collection uh, right at the back of this blade and uh, to do this um, what I did was is you can see that the saw goes back into a the saw goes back into here um, and and that's that's the little port and the port that hooks in for dust collection is right down below here you can see the hole so when when I'm doing the saw, the sawdust is coming back through that little channel, back through that little channel, and then being being sucked up from this down below. So what I found, though, folks, is when my when my saw was in its back position, this little piece of plastic is is a kind of a retractable cover for where the saw sits back in its closed position I couldn't have this you know it would have been nice not to have any holes in this this cover here but you know I have to allow my saw to go back in there to uh, go in its closed position and uh, but when when I'm cutting off my material you see my material will slide in here like this well it would seal it you know because it's high enough that it covers up so the only place this thing can suck air from when it's like that 
is through this little channel here now because it's high enough that it travels right underneath the right underneath as you can see but what I found was is uh, is when this was in its out position I was losing a lot of suction because the air was able to travel in through this little slot where the saw uh, because it would be out here now in its cut position well I wanted to be able to cover up that little slot um, when the saw was out so what I did was I hooked this little piece of plastic on the end of the saw and I've got a slot for it to run into so when my saw gets pulled out it comes out with the saw and when I push my saw back in it goes back in and goes right to the floor and what I've got I've just got a piece of weight hanging on the end of this plastic so that it'll pull it out of the way when uh, when I pull my saw out and when I pull it out it'll come out and cover this and when the suction's running it sucks it right down tight to that folks and I had to put quite a little bit of weight on this to get it to pull back but it's not you know it's not hard to pull out um, and it actually will lay right down on the top of the cut too and uh, and suck down to the material so that all my suction you know there's no place for the for the sawdust to go but back through this channel and down into my dust collector so you know I've cut off some two foot panels here and like I said they were done it was done totally dust free and I'll do another little video here to show you is a little bit uh, a little bit more maybe do this some some of this and with this in action so I'll give you as an, another quick look at it and I got a hole here on the back side here too so I can uh, I can pull this thing right out to its end and take the blade off without having to take anything apart uh, that was something that I needed to have it doing and I use the spray foam there folks just to stiffen it up a little bit um, if I ever decide to take this apart it just chips off really easy but it makes this thing a little bit more rigid which I need it to have so there you go folks thanks for watching my video and I hope you're enjoying them and uh, keep tuning in for more videos like this